I grew up in a very structured family and didn't uh, start drinking until I was of age. Uh, was very active in school, very active in, in my life, and once I started drinking, it was on. My depression I had struggled with since I was 12, and the alcohol seemed to just cure something in me that I couldn't find anywhere else. My eating disorder added to that. I decided it was more important to drink my calories than to eat my calories. <laughs> I was a student going to seminary thinking that I didn't have a problem because I was acing my classes, I was doing well in life, I had a job, so clearly there was no problem. My drinking had come to the point where I was no longer social with people. I was so depressed. Um, I drank by myself every night. Every night. I was in my apartment by myself drinking. I didn't care. I couldn't drink socially anymore. Um, if I did drink socially, I would have to drink before I went out, meet my friends, have a couple of drinks with them, and excuse myself early so I could go home and continue to drink because I knew that my drinking wasn't like theirs. They couldn't keep up with me. I had gone from being a social person, from in undergraduate being the president of a sorority, working many jobs, to the point where I was hiding in my apartment, passing out every night, and being alone in my drinking, in my depression, and, and in my entire life experience. My plan in my future, I wanted to be a minister. I wanted to be with people and I was destroying my life and lying about my life and I realized that I couldn't help anyone else unless I decided to help myself. January 3rd of 2007, my drinking was out of control and I decided to um, drink a pint of vodka and take a bottle of Xanax because I was done. I was tired and I was ready to check out of this world. My family's in Montana. I was in California. I was easily able to hide over the phone that everything was fine, that there was nothing wrong with me. But when I ended up in the hospital, when I ended up as sick as I did, needing immediate help, that's when there was the turnaround. That's when I hit my bottom. That's when my family came to support me, my friends came to surround me. They wanted me to get better, they wanted me to live. My therapist in uh, Long Beach, California was the one who uh, discovered Sovereign Health and led me here. Uh, my family came down from Montana to bring me here and I was in Sovereign Health for three months, uh, 90 days. I didn't admit until about 45 days into my treatment that I had any problems. I was here because my family forced me to be here and I was just doing what I had to do to get out. Um, with the help of the counselors and therapists, Suzanne and Daniel, uh, they really helped me look at my life, look at where I had been um, and where I needed to go. Figuring out what my feelings were, which I learned about being sad, mad, glad, hurt, afraid, and ashamed, which I was never able to identify before. I was able to use those feelings, and I was also able to use the 12 steps, which were designed from Alcoholics Anonymous. And as I've learned, if I don't treat my alcoholism, it will treat me. It's a dark place when you're at the end of that pit, when, when you're in its hell on earth and it feels like there's nothing left, there's no reason to go on, I learned that there is a reason. I learned that there is life outside of the walls of the depression and the drinking and, and the food, that there was something beyond that. When you're so alone and so isolated, reach out. Allow someone, allow anyone to be that point that you can draw faith from. So I take the proper steps by going to meetings, by working with a sponsor. And I also take steps in the other places in my life to work with a nutritionist so that my eating stays under control. And I also work with um, a counselor and therapist as well today to get a grasp on my life and my depression so it doesn't overtake me. And I also work with the psychiatrist that I met here in San Clemente. I've continued to work with him so that um, my medications are regulated, 
which has been highly important to the healing process as well because it wasn't just me that was a problem. There was a chemical imbalance that had to be taken care of as well. So in the 90 days that I was here, uh, it was a life-changing experience. I went from very, very sick when I came into the program to better, not healed, but much better and much more able to go on and deal with life when I left. Uh, I loved the healing aspect of being so close to the ocean and being allowed to have time down there. We even went down to the ocean and did yoga classes some days. Uh, but that was a very healing and, and peaceful experience. The house managers were fun. They were strict. They made us get things done, but they were loving at the same time. The whole program, the whole aspect from outside, being in the house, doing things to, to make ourselves well, healthy, walking on the beach, taking time in the community. Those were healing aspects as well. Not only being in counseling sessions, which we did hours of each day, um, but it was a, a well-rounded experience. There was more than just therapy. There was life skills that were taught and everyone here genuinely cared about each person in the program. It's been almost three years now that I've been sober and have been continually working on my life. Um, I'm now able to work with other people and my route has changed a bit. Uh, I received a degree in recovery ministry from Fuller Theological Seminary. So I now work with people with addictions, um, with dual addictions, with mental illness and addictions to drugs, alcohol, people, food, so my experience and my healing has allowed me to move on to help other people. I loved the counselors and therapists that were here. They genuinely cared about me. Uh, they genuinely wanted me to get better. And I've maintained uh, relationships with those people. Um, it was an honor when I uh, received my master's degrees that Daniel Duffy actually came to my graduation to support me because he told me when I was here, when you graduate, I want to be at the ceremony. Not if you graduate, if you make it. He said, when you make it, I want to be there. And he showed up. And that was an awesome experience and such an honor that he cared enough to have faith in me that I could make it. say that I'm proud um, to see where I've come from, to see the, the depths of the insanity, to the realization that I was able to finish two master's degrees. I was able to get a job working with people and uh, I have a life now and I have the opportunity to give back. Mm -hmm.